Hi, this is Josh from Grappazilla, and today we're going to talk about Boch Mongolian wrestling, also known as Boch. So what is Boch, and what's the history? Mongolia, a large Asian country that has a deep and rich history, the country of the great Genghis Khan, or Genghis Khan, as you say, or Genghis Khan. His empire stretched as far as Europe, and just uttering the word Mongols struck terror deep within any country in his path. Being a warrior is in the blood and soul of every Mongolian, and warriordom is deeply rooted within all levels of Mongolian society. A true warrior race, the Mongols perfected warfare, and one of their main focuses for hand-to-hand -hand combat was Boch and Boch wrestlers. Boch is the national sport of Mongolia, and the name translates as durability, a truly perfect name for this culturalist wrestling style. There have been many depictions of Mongolian wrestlers in cave paintings as far as back as 7,000 BC, and countless amounts of folk tales of mighty wrestlers within each province defeating opponents in valorous manner. Boch, wrestler was born, Boch wrestling was born around 1240 AD and is widely practiced by Mongolians. It is a very developed grappling system with 40 base techniques and 600 variations, adaptations, and setups into these techniques, also known as tricks in Mongolian. What is Boch wrestling? Boch wrestling is a style of wrestling that is from Mongolia. It is a very old style of wrestling with several sub-styles of Boch being practiced in Mongolia. Mongolians cherish Boch as part of, their, part of their being and Mongolian wrestlers embody the spiritual and physical ideology of what is to be a true Mongol for over two millennia. This idea, ideology includes the qualities of strength, speed, clear mindfulness, sharpness, patience, respect, peaceful, peacefulness, and love. Wrestling is a symbol of strength, agility, and resilience of Mongolia, and Boch wrestlers are highly respected within Mongolian society. What styles of Boch wrestling are there? There are several sub-styles of Mongolian Boch wrestling. All are similar, but have some significant differences that produce different wrestling attributes. The different styles of Mong Mongolian wrestling are Khalka or Khalcha Boch, traditional Boch wrestling practiced by a majority of Mongolian wrestlers. The Khalcha is the largest ethnic group in Mongolia. I hope I said it right. And this style somewhat resembles freestyle wrestling. It is the most popular style, and the rule set is the same as the rule set within major Boch tournaments, such as the famous Nadam festival. Southern Mongolian wrestling, also known as Hochin wrestling. This style uses a leather jacket, long pants, and specialized boot coverings, and has some Boch techniques and adaptations of techniques that are used more frequently due to the different style of uniform worn for this style. Actually, this style is said to have influenced Chinese uh, Shuai Zhao wrestling, especially Boke, which is practiced in northern China. You have Inner Mongolian wrestling. This style does not allow for grabbing an opponent's legs or any type of leg attack. Wrestlers lose if any part of their feet touch the ground. Wrestlers are known to have a much more upright stance in Inner Mongolian wrestling. Inner Mongolian wrestling is said to be the closest style to that of the ancient Mongol warriors, as most of their combat grappling techniques would, be, would need more an upright stance when it is in a wartime scenario due to the possibility of weapons and the need to move quickly. Now, when I say that their feet can't touch the ground, it means anything other than the soles of their feet. So their knee, their hip, their calf, their thigh. If anything touches the ground, they would lose the match. The next style is called Boch Nuloldun. This style comes from the Western Mongolia and stretches out into Siberia and to China. The next style is Hulenbur style wrestling which starts matches with no forced contact. No moves are allowed between the legs and hands. Hulenbur wrestlers are allowed to kick the opponent in the leg, and it is not uncommon to see the matches last long periods due to the searching for grips because of no forced contact enforced at the start of the match. You have Buryat wrestling. The Buryat are an ethnic group found in Mongolia and Siberia. This style is somewhat seen in Mongolia along the Russian border, but is more associated with the Buryat people of Siberia. You have Khuresh, a famous style found in Siberia that has a heavy Boch influence, and this style is somewhat found in all countries that are part of the Great Central Asian Plain. 
Actually, it's a relative of, of many other wrestling styles that use the same name, such as Gures in Turkey, Koras in Tatarstan, Kurash in Uzbekistan, Gores in Turkmenistan, Kuros in Kyrgyzstan, Kures in Kazakhstan, and Gules in Azerbaijan. All these countries have taken the word from Kurash or Khurash from the old Turkic word Keres, and the style of wrestling is very similar within each country, with small little adaptations and rules in some, some uh, times. And the last is Mongolian bull wrestling. It's a style of wrestling where a wrestler needs to get the opponent's back to touch the ground in order to claim victory. Now, what are the rules of Mongolian wrestling? Both wrestling matches do not have a contained or set wrestling area. You need to know this. That is why they are done in open fields and not limited by space or wrestling area borders. This makes for a pure wrestling match where the goal stays simple, to get the opponent off their feet and onto the ground. There are no submissions, no strangles or joint locks allowed within both wrestling competition. Each time there is a match, the match will start with both wrestlers performing a traditional Mongolian boch dance. Boch dances generally mimic an animal such as a falcon, hawk, lion, phoenix, tiger, and deer, as well as can differ from region to region. Once the dance is finished, a wrestler will get into a wide half stance and slap the front of their legs twice and the back of their legs once in order to declare they are ready to wrestle. Once the match begins, the rules are simple. The purpose is to throw or take down the opponent to the ground. Generally, two wrestlers start the match locked together in most regions, although some other regions start with the wrestlers not locked together, thus forcing grip fighting for positional dominance to occur. The greater Mongolian wrestling goal is to get the opponent to touch his upper body, his torso, knees and elbows on the ground, although there are no set rules that apply to inner Mongolian version rules, which are that if any part of the body other than the feet, cannot touch the ground, it's an automatic loss. Both matches do not have any weight classes, no age limits, and no time limits. Time limits. Both, ad- both advocates a very sportsmanlike culture when it's, where it is common to see opponents not attacking when opponents' clothes get loose, as well as helping a defeated opponent up after a match is very common to see. Com- common to see. Once a match is over, there's also another boch dance that signals the end of a match, and the defeated wrestler unties his chest belt and slides under the arms of the victor. This represents that the wrestler accepts defeat and his respect to his opponent. Should a lower-ranking wrestler beat a higher-ranking wrestler, the lower-ranking wrestler will still untie his chest belt and slide under the arms of the higher-ranking wrestler as a sign of respect. Now, what is the Mongolian boch wrestling uniform? The Mongolian wrestling uniform has two different styles, a crescent, tight, and baggy, both of which consist of four parts, although it's common to see the wrestlers wrestling without a traditional boch hat. The upper body piece is an open chest, high quality, collarless jacket, traditionally made from wool, but in modern times is made with cotton and silk strings, thread with strings of fiber called a zodog, which is fastened around the chest with a simple string that represents strength and cunning. According to the legend, the reason for the absence of a chest covering is due to the fact that in the past, a woman bochresser had won a tournament and become champion. So to deal with this fact, somewhat preventing women from competing in male tournaments, the chest part of the vest was removed. Shorts similar to a swimmer's trunks called shudag, which are made from a soft leather strings and strings of fiber, and lastly, gutal, which are handmade leather boots made by cow leather with a slight upturned toe. It can take half of a month to make two pairs of boots by hands. Gutal boots can have decorations on them that have been placed after wrestlers earn a rank. Both wrestlers also adorn a hat prior to the match. This hat is four-sided, with each side representing the old four provinces of Mongolia, the top knot represents the five regions of the Buddhist government. In 1995, a red strip of cloth was added with the yellow stripes representing a wrestler's achievements, somewhat as you would see a belt or uh, a warrior wearing some type of um, um, memorabilia on top of their chest. Uh, finally, a silver or golden badge representing rank of falcon, hawk, elephant, phoenix, lion, or champion 
is a tach on the front of the hat. Generally, the outfits are worn in red and blue colors due to Mongolians worshipping the land, sky, and water, and mountains for many generations, thus having greatly affected the Boch uniform coloring. The Nadam Boch Tournament The largest and most prestigious Boch Tournament is the National Mongolian Boch Tournament at the famous Nadam Festival. Nadam translates to game, and wrestling is one of the three manly sports, wrestling, archery, and horsemanship of the Nadam Festival. The Nadam Festival is akin to the Olympics of Boch wrestling, and the National Mongolian wrestling rank can only be derived from performance in the Nadam, Nadam Festival, where rank is given upon how many rounds a wrestler has won and moved upon on the competition table, with the winner of the Nadam being ranked number one in the country. Mongolians believe that a man's spirit and fortune are lifted when taking part in a Nadam competition, and should a wrestler become champion of Nadam, the rank of champion is held for life. Nadam is a very large wrestling tournament, with a staggering 1,024 total wrestlers competing in the tournament. There are 10 total rounds, starting with 1,024 wrestlers, first round, and each round the total number of participants are cut in half, with only winners from the previous round continuing to the next round. The tenth and final round has only two wrestlers, with the winner of that round being declared national champion. Should a wrestler win five, round, five rounds, they will receive the rank of Falcon. If they win six rounds, they receive the rank of Hawk. If they win seven rounds, they receive the rank of Elephant. If eight rounds are won, they receive the rank of Garuda, which is a phoenix. If nine rounds are won, they receive the rank of Lion. And if they win all ten rounds, they receive the rank of Champion. Regional and Provincial Boch Competitions There are many regional Boch competitions in order to determine regional Boch champions, and the ranks are represented by different animals such as the Falcon, Hawk, Elephant, Garuda, which is the Phoenix, and Lion, as well as Champion as a rank. Wrestlers get one chance to increase the rank per year, should they lose, they will need to wait an entire year to increase the rank without the region within the region they reside in. Now, Boch wrestling training. Boch wrestling training is very effective and challenging, with each region having certain training methodologies and specializations that produce great wrestlers. The most notable Boch training is when preparing for the Nadam competition. Boch wrestlers generally take part in a wrestling camp that is situated in nature. The wrestling camp is generally one month long with full focus on wrestling preparation and is the absolute best training a Boch wrestler will take part in. Training is split where four days a week it is more condition focused and three days a week technical and wrestling sparring focused. Okay, conditioning fo focused Boch wrestling. Each day starts with an outdoor hike, usually uphill once the top of the hills reach, they will pay respects to the mounds of stones that are placed in honor of Boch wrestlers at the top of the hill. The purpose of this morning hike is to refresh the mind to the day's hard training sessions and the wrestlers will take part in. The hike also acts as a type of low intensity, passive cardio to get the blood flowing in the morning. Once back from the hike, wrestlers start with dynamic stretching exercises that warm up the body. These exercises are very dynamic with the goal to warm up the entire body and to build and maintain flexibility with strength. Many of the exercises are focused towards wrestling and preparing for the rigors of the wrestling, that a wrestling, wrestler's body will go through in the training session. The next part of the training is running up and down a large hill, small mountain in time, sometimes. This is to build up the lactic acid resistance, mental strength, and stamina of the legs. Usually this part of the training is 15 to 20 minutes long, with the last 40 meters of the last run being a full sprint to the finish. After that, the next part of the training is, built, is about building up a wrestler's resilience and overall stamina once again. This part of training consists of plyometric line drills with different footwork patterns, leg strengthening exercises, jumping patterns, and explosive squat line drills. Once again, all these drills focus on wrestling movements and are very specific to Boch wrestling. The next part of a training has wrestlers performing carrying drills, where they carry their training partners for distance. In certain cases, when near a shallow river, they'll carry their training partner across the river and back. 
These specific body weight carry drills are done several times each. They build stamina and functional wrestling strength. Carrying training partners across a river is rather difficult as the bottom of the river is slippery and full of stones. This causes specific small muscles in the ankles, calves, and feet to become stronger. After that, the next part of conditioning training is strength training. Wrestlers perform a large amount of push-ups, sit-ups, and crunches. All exercises are done with the coach counting, and should someone perform half a rep, the count restarts from zero again. Now, it's very common to see wrestlers doing pull-ups and other strength training exercises after the training, as they are focused on focused on coming into the competition at the peak level of, the, of their fitness. Mongolian wrestlers are known to be some of the strongest wrestlers on the planet. And it's good for, for good reason. They train hard and train intelligently. Now, technique-focused both training. Three days a week are focused towards technical training and preparing the wrestlers for the Nadam festival. Nadam is a large tournament, and with so many Boch competitors, wrestlers must, must make sure that they are fully proficient in all of Boch techniques and tricks should they want to become a champion. The day beca- uh, begins with wrestlers putting on traditional wrestling uniform, and thus training begins with a light jog that has the wrestlers raising their arms up like a falcon to warm up the shoulders and performing a dance which resembles a falcon or hawk. After going into a wide stance half squat position and slap the front of the legs once and the back of the legs once and the front of their thighs again as a gesture towards the opponent to challenge them and notify them they are ready for battle. The training continues with some light sparring where the wrestlers try to perform their favorite training techniques many times over and try out new techniques they have learned. They will go over small details in the techniques in order to fix mistakes and gain better technical proficiency. It is important to note that the Mongolian wrestling training camps are taken very seriously by the athletes and coaches who partake in them. And there are, no, there are certain rules when in training camps, such as wrestlers cannot drink alcohol, they may not leave the training camp grounds without permission, and they must follow the advice and instructions as if it is law. Now, Boch influence on judo, sumo, and Olympic wrestling. Mongolia has one of the best judo teams in the world, having produced many world and Olympic champions, as well as having a very powerful and unorthodox judo style. The success that Mongolians have found within judo can directly be accredited to the influence that Boch had on Mongolia's judo program. Mongolian judo is one of the most influential judo styles in the world. Boch also has a direct influence on Mongolian freestyle and Greco wrestling as it is not uncommon to see Mongolian wrestlers use Boch techniques with international um, wrestling competition. Unbeknown to most of the world, there have been many Mongolians who have become sumo champions and have used Boch techniques to dominate in sumo competition, many times beating the Japanese sumo wrestlers at their own game. Mongolian Boch in MMA. There have been some Mongolian MMA fighters who have found success, success within the cage, many of them using Boch techniques to dominate the opponent. The future truly looks bright in regards to Boch being used more and more within MMA competition. The biggest factor slowing Boch being showcased within MMA is the lack of funding in the Mongolian MMA scene in order to build Mongolian fighters into world-class MMA talent. Mongolians have all the characteristics to dominate in MMA. They are intelligent, strong, resilient, mentally strong, and very talented fighters. With some proper funding into Mongolian MMA, we are certain to see Boch being used in the cage in a dominant manner, just as it's been used on the battlefield for centuries by the Mongolian armies. In conclusion, Mongolian wrestling is about resilience and respect, with wrestlers giving the utmost respect to the higher ranking and older wrestlers. Boch is a medium for giving mutual respect for one another. This has been passed from generation to generation, which has greatly developed Mongolian men physically, spiritually, and mentally over the century. Boch is not only a wrestling style, it is the heartbeat of the Mongolian people. And uh, have a great day, and check out a lot about Boch wrestling. It really is a true grappling sport.